Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Jason back at it again with another reaction video of Geography Now. Guys, it's been a, a couple hours since the last upload. So it's technically still in one day, which means for the first time in 20 years, we're actually gonna have a double upload in this channel. Guys, I just, it's actually mind boggling. The records we are already breaking in 2023. So anyways, we have geography now, Ukraine. Now what I know about Ukraine is a lot. I mean, they were pretty much neglected in the Stalin era of the Soviet Union. They had a really bad uh, grain shortage and a lot of people were starving and yeah, because of the mass production of uh, grain for the USSR. And I mean, I know that Ukraine was a country for a brief couple of years from the Brits, uh, Lovetsk, Brits Lovetsk, uh Treaty, the one with Germany in World War One, And then they just got gobbled up by the USSR again. But hey, man, they were, on their, they were their own country. And then obviously away from the past present day they're in the ongoing war and yeah they've just been having feuds with russia especially with crimea and their east side of the border so yeah it's a, it's a messy situation so yeah man now we have geography now ukraine guys we are in the use how crazy is that but let's just jump into this one it's gonna be big it's gonna be beautiful so let's just jump right into it in three, two, one, go. Okay, so I made a video explaining the Ukraine-Russia conflict in 10 minutes. I made a Geography Go video where I actually went to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now there's only one thing left to do. He probably made Actually's that Ukraine. video so he wouldn't have to talk about it in this video. And it'd just be a whole hey, sticky situation. Your your Was that a new intro as well? Or mug at it's like I don't know, McDonald's. I haven't looked at the other one. Like the other to episodes. In any case, it's not selling out if it's your brand. Then I put the mug away. So as My hair know, is messy and looks different because I left the shower they to and I never just comb my hair. Ukraine, but also to learn more about their country despite it being in the middle of a war. And also thank you United mm. 24 Media. They also helped me get some great footage and interviews with some exclusive people that you'll see in this video and speaking of guests as you know mm. i love having guest hosts from the country and with that say hi to mr misha our ukrainian correspondent Hello. how you doing misha good how are you anything you want to just where's say uh shaktar out there yes I bring where's modric really cool modric you can read actually in ukrainian as a freedom v this is l this is o and yeah voila really it has a meaning i didn't know more about this in flag fan day i didn't know that yeah you ready to start the episode yes let's do it do it. I thought it was just a logo. Wow, you have really white teeth. <laughs> but I mean, man, so Ukraine bro's got LA. Country, and he could just meet anyone from sense, but like in a that one specific country he's doing. Sense. And it's definitely not easy to summarize, especially the part we are about to get into. Mm -hmm. Little disclaimer, uh -oh. we will be portraying what is internationally recognized and constitutionally part of Ukraine as per the Belojeva Accords and the Budapest Memorandum post-USSR breakup. Uh, with that, here's the motion graphic. First of all, Ukraine is the largest country entirely within Europe, located in the eastern part of the continent, bordering seven countries with the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov in the south. The country's capital and largest city is Kiev, located in the north-central part of the country. Just outside the city, on the east side of the river, lies the largest and busiest international airport that services Kyiv, Borispil International. However, there is a more localized, smaller airport near the city center on the west bank of the river, Giuliani International. From there, the That's second and third largest cities... That airport, Kadaki the first Odessa, one? Host the second and third I don't trust that one. It's just in the middle of nowhere. International. Keep in mind, I think as I saw of the onset of the Ukraine Russia war, all air travel has been suspended and grounded until further notice, and the only way to enter into the country is either by land transport Transport from all surrounding countries other than Russia and Belarus, as well as the Russian military occupied 
region of Transnistria in eastern Moldova. Travel via Black Sea to the port of Odessa is also possible, but has come with a degree of precaution during conflict times due to the proximity of Russian involvement on the Crimean Peninsula. Speaking of which, subdivision-wise, the country is made up of 24 oblasts, one autonomous republic, Crimea, and two special status cities of Kyiv and Sevastopol. Now here's where things get more complicated. Even before conflict times, Sevastopol was considered a separate administrative entity from the rest of Crimea, which was already labeled as autonomous, and was even a closed city during the Cold War. As of 2014, Russian Man, forces Crimea have is just like the so Crimean important to like Ukraine. City of Sevastopol, which currently hosts Russia's and now it's just Black like fleet. In a messy situation. Russia started constructing Europe's longest bridge, the Crimea Bridge, a 12-mile, 19-kilometer-long bridge that spans across the Kerch Strait. Effectively, this connected Russia with the Crimean Peninsula for the first time. To this day, only eight heads of state of eight countries have announced recognition of the Crimean Peninsula belonging to Russia, whereas the rest of the world either does not recognize it or still recognizes it as distinctly part of Ukraine. In addition, the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts had military armed Russian backed separatists that seized government buildings and claimed their own republic status. Later in 2022, Russia announced that they would annex them wow. and in what the United Nations General the flags Assembly are just labeled like as an attempted illegal So annexation. original, guys. Since 2014's Crimean Peninsula annexation, Ukraine has been in an ongoing war with Russia, and in 2022, Russian forces have entered and occupied parts in the east and south of Ukraine. There was an attempt in the north, but Ukraine was able to regain territory, and as of making this video, the situation is ongoing and ever-changing. Yeah, Ukraine's domain is definitely a topic of long discussion. And by the way, it's Kyiv, not Kyiv. Kyiv, it's a Russian version of Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. Also, you might hear the term Donbass quite a bit, referring to the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts furthest on the east bordering Russia. The name is a portmanteau of the word Donetsk Basin. Donbass, it's front line of Ukrainian fights. Historically, in the past, Donbass was one of the most industrialized area in Ukraine. So how did all this crazy stuff happen? Not easy to explain. Know. The whole conflict wasn't just a 2002 issue. You have to go back. Here we go again, what guys. Do you mean, the 2014-year-old Maiden protests. Annexation of Crimea? The Donbass Pepper Bank War, too? Well, those, those some things led to it. Or do you mean the 2008 Yushchenko political crisis? Or the 2004 Orange Revolution? Well, I mean... Oh, oh no, wait, let me guess. You're bringing this back to the Soviet collapse and all those accords that were signed in the 90s. That played a huge role, but... Wait, is this about Khrushchev handing over Crimea in 1954? I mean, if you want to add that in there, then fine, but that's not exactly pre-Soviet? Really? Oh, you have no idea how cool. far back this conflict is going. Yeah. Basically, I made a video covering oh. this topic, so we don't have time to spend 80 years scratching the surface. Reference videos are a great way to save time. High five, yeah. Historically, Look at this guy. Ukraine the man occupied played the game. Civilization through the history. In fact, Look at that. Look at all Excavated those things. Culture, saw the, I saw the Romans. I saw the Crimean Peninsula was part uh, of so know. many just different saw the uh, empires in the past. It was the furthest extent of the Golden Ottomans, War. I, I think I saw the Ottomans as well. Wait a second. Hold up. Did you just say that part of Ukraine was Mongol? Yeah, a little more complicated than that, more like a Kipchak Turkish-sized offshoot version of them, but technically kind of yes. In any case, it wasn't until the 9th century the that the uh, Kievan Rus was established, and it was essentially the home of the Eastern Slavs. The Kievan word Rus, Rus was invented by Vikings for the Slavs. If you know uh, your Nordic history, basically it went like this. I'm going west. Well, I'm going east. Uh, I guess I'll go north? Okay, that's enough history. Let's talk about something else. Famous places. Uh, bro, Famous that's places. like the yes. most like and, uh, who better to do it than some oversimplified. Ukrainians. Here you go. Hi guys, <laughs> my name is Tony. Hi guys, my name is I don't is know if I would say oversimplified. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound right, but it does UNESCO feel oversimplified, that history. Well, including the first one, St. Sophia Cathedral, the oldest cathedral in Eastern Slavic My countries. man went over there too. Lavra. Lavra Quick chef for his video. A large and important monastery. Uh, Odessa city and Odessa has um, Potemkin status. We have our own study of liberty. Yeah, that's right. We have the love tunnel. Really? Um, Baturin was once the capital the love tunnel of the looks Kosa, nice, but on the left side of Ukraine. Sofievka Park, yeah. Sofievka Pretty Park. cheesy, I would Beautiful say. Beautiful in spring and summer. Uh, oh, look at that. So many the park looks nice. I want to go there in the Ukraine. summer. Madeleine Monument in Kiev. The ancient Baba stones. And finally, Oh, Chicago. not the For Easter Island look-alike stones over here. and 600 square kilometers. Uh, exclusion zone deemed unsafe for 
habitation. Of but people are still curious and love to visit and has become a top tourist destination in the recent years. And I for forget about Chernobyl, Africa. yeah. Africa, yeah. yeah the city inside. Yeah. And yeah. hope you can visit Ukraine. Yeah, Slava Ukraine. Hey, everyone, Slava. Slava Nazi. Thank you, Tony and Maria. Hey, did you know Ukraine might have the geographic center of Europe, the village uh, Dilove? Yeah. I don't know. I actually been. <laughs> it's a forest and close to the city. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um. I did that. <laughs> okay, gone. So there you go. A complicated map with complicated backstory and even more complicated mode of operating itself. Uh, Ukraine is not a simple country. No, it's not. But one thing that does seem to be quite simple is the landscape of Ukraine. It's a little bit flat. <laughs> a little bit. Most uh, of it. Yes. Yeah. And with that, let's move on. It has that wheat, geography. the grain, the farm, so the, the, the farming before the USSR. Was a little bit of a yeah, with the but it goes so much more Stalin just plan. Ukraine's land is an absolute resource. See, guys, I remember stuff from AP Euro. So AP Euro is a good class because it will make you remember for these type of videos of its chasing. on the East European plain. This is an enormous stretch of generally flat plains and plateaus that extend all the way to what are considered the geographic borders of what constitute Europe along the Ural and Caucasus mountains. Within Ukraine, the landscape essentially slopes downward west to east, starting in the furthest southwestern part of the country where you can find the yeah, highest elevation the water. in the Carpathian some water mountains. Now. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Poverla, in the Zakarpathia Oblast. The Crimean Peninsula is the only other place that has a notable mountain range within the country, averaging around 1500 meters high. The peninsula is only connected via the Perekop Isthmus, which at its narrowest is only about three miles or five kilometers wide. Otherwise, the rest of the peninsula is separated by shallow lagoons and bays with the 70 mile, 112 kilometer long skinny Honestly, Arabat spit. I thought the, the thing, arrow, a barrier island that separates I was gonna say, I thought it was kind of like an island so at there first, you have the but the and Dnieper uplands in the north, the Polesian lowlands nah. and Dnieper lowlands across the longest river. Nah, in the man, country I thought that was an island. Essentially, by when I was uh, half, emptying into the Black Sea before near the that. city of Kherson. The Dnipro River is the lifeline of the country containing several hydroelectric power stations and dams that have effectively created six reservoirs along its banks, which is why it looks like such a fat, wide river on maps and satellite images. In terms of freshwater lakes, uh. the country has tons and tons of small ponds and lakes along their forests and plains. However, the largest inland body of freshwater would be Lake Yalpa in the Odessa Oblast, not far from the Danube River that separates them from Romania. Yes, that is correct. Ukraine is the last country the mighty Danube River gets to encounter before it drains into the Black Sea. And speaking of which, if you're afraid of deep water, probably the best Just place barely to though, oh my goodness. Because it's so shallow, you can walk in hours and hours and hours and it never get deep. Oh really? Yeah. In any case, Wait, really? although most of the country is flat, it is Yo, with export materials. Guys, and, uh, I think I might have a coffee. YouTube like, video I idea Lviv, I have. There, uh, I believe Lviv has more cafes per capita than anywhere else in the world. There's like over 1,500 cafes. Yeah, and the coffee in Lviv, it's amazing. And uh, speaking of coffee, I'm not, it's time for I'm my not, I'm not a big fan break. Of coffee. And with that, here's Noah to explain a little bit more on the trade sector. Take it away, Noah. Noah, back at it again. All right, geography peeps, time to make sure that you know a few things. As an agricultural no, powerhouse, Ukraine on, is often Stop. as the breadbasket of Europe, as they have a huge share of wheat and barley exports. They are also often yep. ranked the number one producer of sunflower seeds in the I've world. said it this before, because guys. About two thirds of their land is arable, and much of it blessed with the rich Chernozem soil. It is characterized by its dark black the color, video. containing high percentages of phosphorus and humus, perfect for crop cultivation. Hummus? Not hummus. It's soil made of decomposed organic material rich in nutrients and has a high moisture retention. Organic material with high moisture? I mean, that's not that far off from hummus. Sure, whatever. Guys, Can how come I didn't learn this in AP Bio? You AP Bio is in any case, years despite having a mixed economy made up of industry, before energy, this video, this video is like years ahead of AP Bio over one here. One of the lowest income nations in all of Europe and is classified as a lower middle income. Economy. This is due to many factors such as hyperinflation in the 90s, monetary expansion due to government spending. The largest hit, though, would have to be their cutting of ties to their former largest trading partner, Russia. Since then, their trade with the EU Dang. has increased dramatically, mostly going through Poland. The Ukraine irony, is also man, the a irony. Powerhouse, hosting about 90 different minerals, 20 of which are economically significant. Today, Ukraine operates four nuclear power plants, including the largest in Europe, in Zaporizhia. There used to be five plants. But we all know about the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, the largest nuclear accident to date. Nobody is allowed to move or give birth there. However, a few elderly inhabitants yeah. are allowed to remain in their original homes where they live quietly and receive aid. 
Weirdly enough, this actually really one of Ukraine's largest tourist destinations. There's no way, man. It was like it's so sad. I mean, some people, so yeah, I'm not even like surprised. Some people go it. there, this like, they don't even care, but it off. people but still live there. I'm a disaster like, enthusiast. I'll pay you a lot no of money. Way, Okay, give me your money. And that's how that industry started. They also have their own domestic nice. automobile manufacturing plants and brands, the largest being Zaz or Zaporizhian Autos. In addition, Ukraine is one of the nine countries with a full cycle of aerospace hardware engineering and production. They're probably most famous for their production of large-scale Antov and Ruslan cargo transport jets, including the AN-225 Mria, the largest transport aircraft ever created. Unfortunately, on February 24, 2022, so destroyed a Russian attack while parked in a hangar at the Antonov Airport. No. That was a lot of. Okay, let's go. One person that always lightens a heavy mood would be our resident animal correspondent, Gary Harlow. Let's roll. Gary Harlow. Animal correspondent. Time to fly into this like a Ukraine. First of all, Ukraine is nah, a treasure trove. Come on, trove. man. What are these puns? You can find the national flower Guys, gotta stop everywhere. with these puns. Thanks to the cooler, wet climate, Ukraine is able to harbor over 6,600 species of identified fungi and many more problems. Is it just me, or is the? It really is the mushroom kingdom. The little oh, no, the thing Nintendo below the hat. In some of the forests, it's not in his blows like chin. Wolves, brand bears, lynx, it's kind of bugging me, but boars, not really. Man. Birds are a huge part. Of Ukraine's Pools, bro. Over a hundred species are either the pig look like there's no way. If a little egret or white it's probably like only in the on zoos. telephone pole or on top of your house, it is said to be good luck. It's like you have been chosen for my blessing. The national animal, though, is the nightingale, known for what's, being able to mimic going on, sounds it hears and repeat them back. They would be like you have been chosen for my blessing. Oddly enough, it's due called to the lack of human activity, animals temporal are behavior. It's probably Even not, but Shibolsky that's like kind of the thing in shorter, biology. Stockier, Guys, I'm using AP shorter, biology for once. Let's go. Daughter to feed. Cheers, mates. Thanks, Gary. Speaking of yeah, this guy's a fodder. This is crazy. Picking in the forest, as many of the species are edible and used. Cuisine. No mushrooms, bro. Get those mushrooms away from me. It, we have a very I hate mushrooms. Star, possibly the most famous chef in Ukraine, Mr. Klopotenko. Take it away to the food. Uh, introduce yourself. So my name is Yevgen Klopotenko. Oh. Uh, I'm Ukrainian chef, and I'm Man, the guy who interviewed is this the guy. Food culture in Ukraine, and I'm trying to put Ukraine on the world. The Ukrainian oh, Gordon right. Ramsay over here. That's my pants. Yeah, so uh, the most famous uh, uh, appetizer is like our pork fat or sal because we we, uh, we were not using a lot of butter. The sweatshirt or the shirt, whatever it is. For the Ukrainian cuisine, it's a I like that. It's Look at that. All those crocodiles. Dish, and now it's uh, from the 1st of July of 2022. It's a world heritage dish. Nekos dish is called Sirniki. Uh, we're just frying that and uh, it's very nice. So uh, the third dish is called the dumpling. Well, we call it Sareniki, but uh, in Ukraine, it's, got potential. it's very famous to, to use the sour cherry and the uh, poppy seed chicken kiev oh i love chicken yeah chicken kiev oh, okay. uh, chicken fillet uh, and inside uh, okay it's man a, uh, ba 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 right. butter and some deal normally can you cook get that. chicken kiev with salo <laughs> I would try uh, that. That would be super Ukrainian. Yeah, no, it will be super <laughs> fat. <fake. laughs> That's all I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, super I mean, Ukrainian. it's also Kiev cake. Uh, some kind of meringue. With, Man's uh, already doing uh, these combinations over here. It's our it's like fermented bread uh, drink. And uh, we're putting this uh, kvass uh, on top of the meat. It's called Vereshaka. Last question. Favorite dish you can cook? <laughs> Me? Why are these guys in like a movie theater as well? Board. Like you if see you this? To board, you have to touch me, touch me. I was hoping like yeah, a rule of third like, shot. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. This guy over here Thank interviewing, you. sitting yeah. on like a yeah. chair, you, chef. And lights that, ready. My, my man Barb's in the Barb's background just <laughs> asking the question. Thank you, Noah. Yeah, also Ukraine have a quiet uh, culture around the bread. From my research, you guys have over 80 kinds of ritual breads. Oh, my mom also, she cooked. Uh, well, I mean, they got the wheat. Uh, bread so. And Not really surprised. From, uh, untangible heritage of Ukraine. of Ukraine. Well, in any case, uh, just like the food, the people of Ukraine have so many unique traits and flavors to them. Let's discuss that. So, uh, Misha, your opinion. 
What is a Ukrainian person? It's a person who have a Ukrainian heart, no matter where you live, no matter who you are, what color you are. I live in the US, I live here, but I still have a deep attachment to the culture and uh, people. You can take the Ukrainian out of Ukraine, but you can't take the Ukraine yeah, out of sure. them. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so Ukraine's population has gone through- Same with uh, Harry Kane. The past three decades, the or uh, anyone who left Tottenham Hotspurs, like uh, Pochettino. Like mass you can take Pochettino out of Spurs, but you can't take the Spurs out of Pochettino. Tino, man. Uh, and also, depending on which census you rely on, Tino gotta come back to PSG so I can make fun of PSG some even more. include or don't include Crimea and the Donbass Oblast of Donetsk and Luhansk. As of 2023, Russia has annexed over 90% of Luhansk Oblast and the half of the Donetsk Oblast, including the capital Donetsk. With all that taken into account, due to the conflict times displacing people across the country, ethnic group numbers have fluctuated and there's no concrete way of getting exact numbers, but this is the general demographic makeup I got by averaging out numbers from as many sources Man's using here we go. Yeah, man, man's using the research of now million, which is and not like estimate that includes before the return diaspora the war. But also does not include the Crimean population around 2.5 million and shaving off some of the 2.5 million population living in annexed populations of the Donbass region but does include the half million of Ukrainians in Ukraine controlled areas of the Donbass it seems the country is of course predominantly made up of people that identify as ethnically Ukrainian at somewhere around 80% there some Somewhere around 17% of the nation claims to be ethnic Russian. Keep in mind, these lines are kind of blurred because many people are also mixed between both Ukrainian and Russian parents, and many may claim either side depending on who you talk to, mm. but this seems to be the general number. From there, the remaining population is made up of various other ethnic groups, mostly from neighboring nations like Romanians, Hungarians, Polish, Ukrainian Jews, Pontic Greeks, and yes, even a small population of Koreans. In any case, quickly, Koreans? Where'd those come from? Uh, we use type C just teleported the there and we drive on the right side of the road in Ukraine the official language obviously is Ukrainian an East Slavic language descended out of the medieval Ruthenian language yeah, I don't Russian, it's I don't get the Eastern European language, language. The let's not even get started with Russian the Imperial Eastern uh, Hemisphere uh, like China also, uh, and Sushik, Asia is, just Asia to be Sushik honest is my first language actually with uh, which I grow up English bro uh, it just carries me Russian so language, hard so like the Latin different words which doesn't exist anywhere like the alphabet like a lot word just structure like an A right? like, yes, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Kinda, like yeah. I still continue the structure is just uh, uh, like a bit ain't that A B C D my best friend but Ukrainian is more common I don't know man in the country it's obviously changed the closest languages you guys can understand are probably belarusian and polish maybe or? uh yeah i think like if you sp uh, if uh, anyone speak in uh, belarusian polish czech language you can understand easily oh you can understand czech too yeah yeah wow okay speaking of which near about three quarters of all ukrainians claim to be affiliated with the eastern orthodox church uh, and then 10 percent being catholic you mostly in the west part, part yeah yes. like by yeah. Lviv. and the southern part is a mystery now there are quite a few regional customs mm -hmm. between Ukrainians like you know you have the Hutsu Ukrainians and the Carpathians and you have the Bukovina Ukrainians but nothing exemplifies the Ukrainian identity more than the Cossack spirit right yes it is yeah. what is a Cossack Cossacks eventually mean free men it's actually people who was, doesn't want to be part of Polish Lithuanian and also Russian Empire they was made from uh, exile from both places just the whole rebel over here free society from monarchy kind of sounds like a country of just adventurous people yes it is yeah. the exact origins are disputed but in a nutshell they stem from semi I guess I'm almost close up, guys steppe and Caspian steppe region. I do so like going to places after all that crazy shit with the Mongols went down so oh and I think the peak of the Cossacks culture Mongols, man. Was there's always gotta be like a connection with these Mongols because he I swear the border and capital they were right in between two major empires the Russians and the Polish Lithuanians and uh, when said states saw these Cossacks it was like hmm those Cossacks are very rough and militaristic and they're like very hell bent on maintaining their autonomy. Why don't we use that to our advantage? Uh, how so? They love fighting. So why don't we just hire them as mercenaries to fight our battles while promising them autonomy? Hmm, I mean, I really do want to expand past. You should not be talking, you have that bro. With the Ottoman Empire. You're going right? to be splitting right? up. Wait, yeah. Don't we hate each other too? Yeah. Long story short, yeah, the they hate each other. Always been the of part I'm of like, bro, and Polish Wait, Lithuania should not like be talking, bro. Like They're about to get split it up with yeah, like three, three different countries or kingdoms. Uh, in any case, uh, it's you kingdoms, need to be but strong and fierce when competing in countries. Sports. So okay. it's the same that, thing, guys. Jump over to it was the probably the same thing in the 17th century. 
can't find his keys. Alrighty, Can you help? Let's get Ukraine in the membrane. You know that song like. I hope you find your keys, bro. Never mind. Ukrainian sports have always gone hand in hand. Wasn't this the so much so dude that, that was making the, the music own, reference? Like, combat hopak, a martial art that was invented by Zaporizhian Kozaks that makes a roll over here. Dance with fighting. There's also traditional hopak saber fencing and wrestling. You played a Kozak in the Russia episode, remember? I do remember that. Yeah, I was really pent up and <laughs> angry. Ukraine has competed in every Olympic. And he had a whole beard, too. Look at him. I just got that baby Since face Ukraine going. Ukraine has racked up nearly 150 medals at the Olympics as of 2023 with 38 gold, the best events being gymnastics and wrestling. Larissa Latina is a total national treasure. Competing under the Soviet Union, out of any male or female, she held the record for 48 years with the most gold medals at nine, and overall she won 18 medals over the course of three Olympic Games. In terms of wrestling, Ukraine has many champions, but a huge deal in wrestling would be Jean Belianuk who got the gold in Tokyo Olympics and we got him on the show. Barbs was actually able to interview him in the Ukraine episode. Really? A quick snapshot Look at right this, bro. Yeah, Geography now going big. I'm uh, Afro-Ukrainian. I'm Olympic champion in greco roman wrestling and uh, member of Ukrainian parliament. My first He's got the microphone. Uh, guys, like I'm learning, guys. Eagle zone, man. Mr. Zelensky. We know and bro, then he ain't even have to put it under his shirt, the microphone uh, wire. Literally blends in with the suit, the brown suit. What was your life like growing up? And look at that. He, this man went to the deputy of the Ukrainian the parliament. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And uh, new country, new rules. Mm -hmm. And that's why And I was only with my mom. Uh, guys, with the, my type of team, of course, yeah, yeah. and different, di different, difficult situation. But uh, do Ukrainian people generally accept you? Ukrainian people are very uh, tolerant, you know, and uh, I have a lot of um, friends. School of life, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's why maybe I decided to go into Greco-Roman wrestling. Yeah, and now you're in the parliament. Now you're a famous uh, gold medalist. Are you happy? Uh, yes. I feel honored. Uh, after, after Barack Obama. You I feel think like Ukrainian oh. Barack Obama. <laughs> like, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, man. <coughs> and yeah. I appreciate that. I was going to start you, showing up in those uh, cool anyway, there Trump, so Obama, TikTok memes over here. In Ukrainian athletics. Like those the videos are fun, brother, yeah. The two -time Carrying TikTok right now. Winner, that dude who broke over Modric. Where's Modric? Records. But at the end of the I want day, to see Modric. You must mention Aww. FC Dymano, Ukraine's most popular football club. They have won dozens of USSR champions. Yo, where's Shakhtar to nice, bro? Where's Shakhtar? And number Modric. seven, the Ukrainian dream, Andre oh, Chepchenko. Oh, Shakhtar. Who won awards for the best player. Shakhtar. He won two bronze and one golden ball. I don't know why I care so much about Modric. And enjoys playing golf. And it's not really doing well in Chelsea, uh, to be honest. Don't we all just want that? To look back at all the glory and just play golf in our spare time. Get out of the house. No, I hate right, golf. I'm sorry, baby. dude. I'm going to play some golf. Thank you, Art. It's important to mention the acrobatic school in Ukraine. It's also really big. Yeah, like Ukraine's got talent. There's always like 50 different u acrobatic acts or something. Anyway, so many things about the culture. You know what's going to happen. Hannah. Yeah, they, they, they got everything. Take it Every away. country it's with the uh, Got Talent show. It's the culture segment. Ukraine it's got talent. Big. Britain got it's talent. America has got talent. <laughs> So what are some of the it's things probably Mexico's that got talent. Ukrainian. For one, oh, there's so many god talents. Historically, Ukraine's had a significantly different climate and different rich soil from their Russian neighbors. This influenced so many things in daily life, like traditional Ukrainian white clay thatched roof houses versus wooden Russian cabins. Many historians yeah, also attribute this as a factor to why Ukrainians have I mean, a more Ukraine was ahead of its time. Look at, the, look at that. Due to the fact that single families could be completely I'd rather live in that house, to be honest. Look at that. Ways. As opposed nice. to the more collectivist, Russians that had fewer immediate access to resources like and needed stuff. to depend on the largest I mean, community you start a fire operate. too. In theory, probably make of it burn fast. In any case, the national dress right, is even the better. And the embroidery has very specific motives and patterns and are indicative to the specific regions the wearer is from. Many of these patterns are rooted in ancient Slavic mythology and beliefs, which are to some extent still practiced and synchronized with their predominant Eastern Orthodox tradition. Ukrainians have also been huge on inventions and accomplishments. Things like CDs, bloodless blood tests, no, vaccines, 
begins to do the plague and cholera. Here. Postcode, kerosene lamps, and the first kidney transplant was performed in Ukraine as well. The list goes on. Of course, Ukraine has never shied away from the arts. You might find the whimsical Opishina ceramics in gift shops, usually depicting lions and rams. If that's not your thing, maybe go for some Petri Kiva. Literature is a huge pastime too. This guy is considered the first modern Ukrainian author. Taraj Shevchenko is a national poet, and everyone knows Leska Ukraina, was one of the most famous writers that pushed for Ukrainian independence. Today, numerous monuments and six museums are dedicated her, to her sorry. honor, and she is even no. on their money. Many artists, filmmakers, and writers were suppressed during the Soviet times. Nonetheless, Ukrainian cinema has lived on. No movie more world-renowned and critically acclaimed than Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors. Yeah, if you want to see real authentic Ukrainian customs and traditions, Ukrainians will tell you to go to the Carpathian. That's where all the original stuff goes down. And another original thing Ukraine has is music. And let's see who's taking over the music segment, because these days, it switches off a lot. Honestly, anyone's better than Keith. Man. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Feel Keith here. For Keith. So I haven't been able to um, have enough time to even come up with a script. So our process in the middle of nowhere. Take it over. Also, I want to say a big shout out to the metal band. Jim Just heard of like a big gold scary here pro. Here is Yvonne with the music. Later, dogs. Hey, most of Ukrainians believe that musicality is one of the main features of Ukraine. The oldest physical instruments found in Ukrainian territories is Vitkachka and flutes from mammoths. Look at that. Years old. He got right someone to do his so segment. Like Vira, Kobzats, That's how much Kurvitz, people Kurvitz, love Kurvitz, his Vika segment. And so on. Pagan rituals still took place in Ukraine, such as Kupala, Malanka. So a lot of Ukrainian songs have pagan elements. Also, there was Dumy, historical songs about knyaz, wars, etc. Dumy had been performed by Kobzars. They played Bandura or Kobza while singing, but during the Soviet era almost all of the Kobzars were killed. Kobza and Bandura were prohibited and confiscated, just like literally burned. Maxim Berezovsky, born 1745, basically the Ukrainian author. Semen Bulak Artemovsky, author of the one of the first Ukrainian opera, Zaporozhye of the Nine. Nikola Lysenko, born 1842, called the father of Ukrainian music. He also a father of USSR and Russian anthem, because his composition Epic Fragment was stolen and rearranged. <laughs> This man wrote the Russian anthem. No. And he has his own. This guy has his own star in Hollywood. Oh man. But Nikola hasn't seen his success because the USSR's Bolsheviks killed him in 1921. Volodymyr Vasyuk, born 1949, writer of the best Ukrainian hit songs of that time, Chervona Ruta, Vdaleki Vore, was killed by KGB. Okay, Ukraine has taken part in the Eurovision contest since 2003. Yeah, it's just the USSR the and their uh, in 2004, in 2016, single and government in just so this kind of having that secret say, police, you know. Mark, Thank you, Ivan. I remember one time, though, I tried to whistle in a car, and they, the guy yelled at me. He's like, don't whistle in a car. Yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> yeah, like, whistle, it's uh, in Ukrainian culture, it's uh, kind of like for bad luck. We've covered really? so much no. about the culture and the people and the demographics of Ukraine. Guess what? There's other people in this world, and uh, Ukraine seems to interact with them. Which brings us to the last segment. The friend zone, look at that. So Ukraine Beautiful and graphics, uh, friends guys. around the world, it's, uh, it's just like their history. It's ever complicated and shifting. Always shifting, yes. yes. I feel but, like uh, everyone's just friends with Ukraine Let's now. Get into it. First of all, to this day, it seems their number one foreign policy objective has been integration with the Euro-Atlantic zone. In 2018, they officially ended their participation with the CIS, further cutting ties to Russia and other members, but mostly Russia. Outside of Europe, Canada was not only the second country in the world to recognize like, their independence, Ukraine but actually like has the largest gone through a whole diaspora break up with Russia. around 1.5 million, mostly the concentrated in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Today, they have a free trade agreement, and many cities are sister cities, including Kiev with Toronto. The USA has the second largest Ukrainian diaspora in the Americas and has also Eve been a key Toronto. ally in more recent times as they, Such along a weird with other countries, have pledged billions what? of dollars in aid during war times. High-level visits have been conducted by both heads of state and overall relations have grown since the 2010s. In Asia, it seems Turkey and China have an interesting role. Both have expressed interest in helping mediate somewhat in conflict. However, for the most part, they've been low-key and just business-oriented. Since 2008, China surpassed Russia as becoming 
becoming Ukraine's largest trade partner. And in 2022, Chinese ambassador to Ukraine Fan Xianrong is quoted for saying that China will support Ukraine both economically and politically despite conflict times. Turkey is an interesting one. Not only have they both had historically strained relations with Russians, yeah, I don't know Turks what dating back to Ottoman times, but Turkey Erdogan here, is man? also explicitly quoted for telling former President Poroshenko that Turkey would not recognize the annexation of Crimea. In addition, they are a major partner in Ukrainian exports across the Black Sea and do lots of business with them. Back in Europe, though, we get a more clear image of where the closest ties lie today. And since 2022, the EU has granted them candidate status for ascension to the EU, and Zelensky signed an EU membership application. Since then, they have also joined NATO's Enhanced Opportunity Partner Interoperability Program and have submitted an application for membership as well. Every Baltic country and Finland have expressed huge support for Ukraine since the onset of the war. Each side has a period of time understanding Man. conflict with Russia. The main reason why this war started. Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Germany, Ukraine, Czechia, and non-EU Moldova have all taken in many refugees during the war and have pledged support for Ukraine. The UK is a huge supporter. Immediately when you enter any British airport, you will see signs set up in the Ukrainian language offering assistance yeah. for refugees. In addition, they have pledged aid so to many Ukraine of the and are blue even in a trilateral security pact with flag. Ukraine. When it comes to That's their best nice. friend, almost every Ukrainian I have talked to has said Poland, which is the third member of the trilateral security pact. Poland has taken in the most refugees since the war. They share a bond based on history of understanding what life was like either under the Soviets or the Warsaw Pact. Their languages are pretty intelligible, and integration of Ukrainians into Polish society is incredibly easy for them. All of the drama of the former Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth oh, no. years centuries ago is pretty much over, and they moved that. on. Polish Ukrainians and Poles will back. always be there for each other. In conclusion, Misha, you are the Ukrainian. I'm going to give this to you, and I'm going to head out. See ya. Ukraine, it's not just border. Ukraine, it's people, soul, culture. As long as Ukrainian people exist and culture, there will be always Ukraine. And we will always fight for our freedom and uh, independence. Slava Ukraini! Thank you, Misha, for being in this episode. Really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned. United Arab Emirates is coming up next. Oh, man. I'm sure there's a lot of oil going to be spilled in that episode. Because, get a case? Oil on them is a big thing. So yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the beautiful geography now reaction. Guys, please leave a like and subscribe if you guys learned a lot about Ukraine. I learned a lot about Ukraine, as you can tell with me saying, oh shoot, I didn't know that. I don't know. You know what, man? Just, you guys have a good night, man. I don't know. I'm gonna go now, so, bye guys.